It's just a mess. In this vlog series, I am transforming an old three-story house into an eco home while living in my van conversion. So today it's a bit of a rainy day outside and I'm gonna do uh, my setup for the solar. So at the moment, these are gonna be the two DC isolators. This is where the power comes in, direct current from the solar panels. Uh, basically so you can switch them all off before you do any work here. Then it will come into the bottom of my solar inverter, which will go here. And just basically to put a load of screw holes in this, screw it up rather than use the big bolts. Uh, and then at the bottom of that, it will go to uh, an AC isolator, a meter, another AC light, a isolator, and then it will go into into my switch box. It's really heavy. Uh, this is my inverter. So this is by Solax. Costs about just over a grand uh, in UK. Basically, it's big enough to take the power from all my solar panels, 20 panels. Eventually, I can buy a bank of batteries, and then at night time, it can be running off the batteries. So that would mean the mains becomes pretty much only as backup and the house is essentially off grid. When all of this is connected up, then I'll connect it on the roof because it'd be uh, and there'd be less uh, risk of killing yourself because if these were all connected up to the panels and you touch the ends, it's enough voltage just to kill you dead. So you don't want to do that. These are my solar panel cables coming in uh, from the roof. There will be plus negative, plus negative down here, and they'll feed into the unit using the standard MC4 solar collectors. Come out uh, into the mains, and it'll go into this AC color switch, into the meter, which is telling me how much um, solar has been generated over the time. Then it'll go back into this one, AC isolator, and then it'll go into my consumer unit. And I bought a bigger consumer unit. Um, I had electricians put one in when they rewired the into the house because I just needed it before I could actually get my power upgrade. Eventually, when all this is kind of connected and a bit more legit, I can start transferring the main power into here. I've got a load of a 16 mil cable, which will take it from the mains in into here. So there's a bunch of work to do before I can actually use any of my solar. Um, so it's a little bit, I can just take my time a little bit, figure it out, make sure I'm happy with the setup, the layout, uh, and I'm doing things correctly by right. <laughs> I had a load more uh, wire right today, so now I can get back on finishing the wiring. So to stop um, getting unstuck in the future, because you have a box and you have all these conduit lines coming out of it, I've basically on the back of each of these box covers, which will be painted the same color of whatever the wall is painted, I have a diagram which will show me where the conduit lines go and along which it will just show you the wiring connection, so what wires being connected up. Otherwise, you just have a bunch of wires you got some random, some things pointing off in different directions. You might not really know which one goes where without turning stuff on, unplugging it, turning it back on. So basically wiring diagrams and conduit diagram, I feel like it's going to save me a lot of hassle in the future. Um, and even now, if I didn't write this stuff down behind a wall, I just not sure where it will go. I just can't remember because there's like bloody loads of these things. Um, so yeah, and I've got more wiring today, which means I can get on with the wiring finish off the top room, start working on downstairs, some of the uh, big dedicated lines coming up, uh, and then hopefully get the wiring done. I can start plugging things in, redoing my consumer unit, uh, and basically start start wiring up the house so it actually works, getting the solar into it, that'd be really exciting. going on it. So you've got the lights for the bathroom, the switches for all the rings in this room uh, and also coming up all direct ones which will be going straight into 
the oven, um, dishwasher, which we do directly without any connectors. Um, yeah, bit of an octopus that one. Pretty mad. Anyway, not really looking forward to wiring that one, but yeah, gotta do it. This is the diagram for it. So this is the label for all of the actual conduits. This is the coding scheme for the um, different lighted rings. So I'm just gonna like color on little bands on each end of the wire so I know which one is. Uh, this is basically the, the wiring diagram. So I think it's figured out, it won't be too bad. So today I'm gonna start doing more insulation. I've ran out of 1.5 mm cables. That's another 100 meters going into the house. Uh, it takes a lot, so I've ordered a whole bunch more, but it will take a few days to arrive. So yeah, I'm gonna put in a bit of insulation, leave a gap around where my fire plumbing's gonna go, and probably start working out some of that, to be honest. Uh, there's always, I've got a lot of stuff, so there's always stuff I can be doing. It's just working on what the best thing to do is at a particular point in time. So basically, I'm gonna do that. Insulate this wall. Just put in the boxes into the plasterboard piece that goes here, the fire plasterboard and then I can basically just get on with it. Finally, um, a couple of bits for my radiators have arrived. These are just kind of these little valves. They look really nice actually. Um, and it means that the angle then means that it'll go straight into the wall, which is obviously empty, because I'm, I'm not going to the floor. So it goes straight into the wall and then into my pipe work. And this is the one from bedroom two, like the small bedroom. Uh, and the great thing is now I can actually do the plumbing from that bedroom out uh, and just get some stuff moving on that. And then once that plumbing's done, then I can plaster up that plaster board up that wall which would be great um so yeah i mean don't know what i'm doing so i'm just going to look at it uh look at some youtube videos <laughs> work out how you're basically meant to fix these up i think basically a little ptfe tape um on the thread then do the thread up tight then basically crank it all up uh, and then mount it and these are um compression fittings which will also work on the pipe so it's a little olive in there on the plastic pipe and there's a really small gap between the radiator and the wall. Walls here, between here and here, it's like 10 mil. So I was initially thinking put a couple of pipes where you can see them, but it'll be so small and if you put a little cover on it, you would never see it. On the larger radiators, it'll be a bit different, there'll be more to see. So I'm gonna go for that. I'm actually so far very happy with these. So I put my fittings on. Um, first, just screw this one in. I'll put some PTFE tape on it. Uh, Screw that one up. This is still not super tight because I can tighten it into this piece with a big pair of pliers or a big uh, spanner. Uh, put on the bleed, which is how you can kind of undo to let some air out. Uh, on the other side, it's just a capped off point. So put those two on. Um, I've drilled a couple of holes in my wall. Now I need to see the size it will be from the plastic pipe, which will go in, how much will go through the wall, and how much is needed to go into the joint of my, my push fit. So see what that is, cut those lengths, and then put it together. So today we had a delivery rich day. I'm in tube, which I'm gonna to attach to the chimney pipe. This will go down to my extraction hood. Now, strictly speaking, the heat recovery system would sort of do it all, but the cooker extraction fan's not on for a huge amount of time, and it won't make a huge, huge problem, I think. I've gotta extract my cooking smells out through the roof. Um, from like a planning basis. So got some of these. I'm just gonna seal it up, tighten it up, run it down. Also got these. These are the edging corners for the plasterboard. Um, and that means I can plaster, finally, I can plaster the room upstairs, two bedrooms, and then the bedroom downstairs, and I can start putting this on in different places. So there's that going on. Got some more wire, um, so I can do more wiring. And I got some little bits of uh, copper pipe and gas for the blowtorch, so I can basically do, hopefully, all my heating system. So now, um, in the process of wiring up the downstairs, or the, the, the middle floor, um, not going too bad, it's just like more complicated with the light rings than this. Uh, so it just takes a little bit more time to kind of make sure you're getting it right. Then you got two boxes to do and then I'm done. And I can basically start working on the fireplace. So the fireplace, what I really need to do 
is make the pipes which will go into the back of the fire and kind of embed them in the wall, tile the floor, move the fire in, solder the pipes into the fire, put on the chimney stack and then I can start the plumbing um, around that. So there's a few stages but I'm quite excited to get it done. This is my fire the back boiler. Um, the water goes in and out of these on the back. Uh, uh, so I've got these which will go to a 28mm pipe and this is one inch thread I think. Um, to fix it, like obviously this gets hot so I'm thinking it could be it won't work that well. Um, my dad recommended this stuff because uh, he used the same one and this fire hasn't started leaking so basically I'm gonna put this in with this stuff, crank it up tight, old man he sold me this place had some spanners left over which fits freaking perfectly. Boom. Uh, so I'm going to put that on and then um, I'll start doing the measurements, working out the heights of these, where they're going to correspond to my wall, make the pipes, work out the lengths, don't start directly above each other but they end up directly above each other because I think they're directly in the middle and then I can sort of like start putting those in, soldering up some pipes put it on the plasterboard wall and just basically get this thing moving. Duff's got lots of warnings saying it's bad for you, so I'm gonna use the gloves. So I'm marking out my fire, where it's gonna be, the center lines. And the kind of difficult part now is to basically get a bend in pipe which goes from where my hole is. I can't put any further back because there's a big beam underneath here and then it will exactly match this line. So that's 31, 8.5, oh, 31.5, 8.5, so total it's 40 centimeters. And I basically need to get this like perfect shaped bend to give this curve. I can have them both at the same height and then so where they come down on the inside of the plasterboard on one of them, the top one, I'll put a little thing like this, um, get out of the way, then they'll come down together parallel, uh, and then I just have to work out the heights I want for them from those, and then I'll be able to put from through the walls, put in the plasterboard, cut all the holes in it, finish the boards, uh, and then put down the tiles ready for getting the fire on and basically soldering these into the fire. I've got a pipe bender, but it doesn't actually do 28, so I just have to figure it out. This time I'm going to try and fill it with sand, see if it works better. This was just buckling at the top. It's not going to be any good. It's just a mess. I'm just going to have to try and find someone who's got a pipe bender or get a hold of one. It's a bit of a pain at the moment. I just need these two little bends and the pipe bender I bought. It's just the wrong size. So today I am going to try and do my first solder joint of a copper pipe. So I'm just going to practice on these little bits. Uh, so basically what I understand is first take some memory cloth and go around your pipe. Basically clean it and rough it up a little bit like this. Do the same on the inside of it. That's quite small. I think you can use like a brush to do it but I don't have a brush so these are pretty clean anyway. This is the flux that I've got from Screwfix uh, and the flux basically aids the bonding of the solder to the pipe and also means that the solder will flow into the joint through its capillary action so without it you can't you just can't do it at all basically. I saw in one video that basically you use the same amount of solder as the diameter of the pipe so you put a kink in it, should be able to make that work. And also, you should heat from the bottom. So this is my uh, torch, I've got a fancy one. So we just start heating it. Now I'm gonna let it cool, and I'm gonna do another one in the top. And just 
see how it goes. And then I can test it and see whether I actually made waterproof seal. It's not the most beautiful thing. I think I put a little bit too much solder on that one. But why not just try again? See how it goes. Again, probably too much, but we'll just see how it goes. We'll clean up the joint afterwards and then we'll just test it with water, I guess. This is the first joint. Uh, as you can see one, like the first one, I just put too much solder in and the second is a little bit better. Um, I'll do a few more practices to make sure that I get a good, I think the kind of the main thing is, um, like you see this one, it's like just kind of filled. This one I went over the top. I think you get it hot and then just let it take itself in without putting it over. I think I just kind of went to town the first one, like putting too much in. Um, but it's pretty cool, it's really strong, um, waterproof. It's pretty nice. And in other news, uh, if you are looking for a crack pipe, I'm in business, I've got 25 meters of pipe here. I can make them to any size crack pipe you want, any way you want to smoke it. So if you're keen, um, you can get it through the Patreon. Um, and yeah, just, just hit me up there and we'll see what we can do. I feel that was a bit better. Like I didn't go too heavy on the solder. Seems like a pretty good join all the way around. Slowly improving and getting tidier from the first one, which had this much mess on it. And then the second one, it's a bit better. And the third one, and then the fourth. Yeah, slow improvements. I think I can, I can do a pretty good job with this in the end. I've been working on these uh, arches. Today it has arrived, something which has been delayed for two months. 